Friday, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Um, uh, in case you're wondering, I did shave my head. So, uh, yeah, it does feel weird. <laughs> uh, I think the last time I shaved my head was Police Academy. So, uh, and um, yeah, by popular demand, I, uh, I uh, decided to shave my head. 90% of you on my poll wanted to me shave my head, so I did this morning. So, uh, I'm waiting for Jesse Katina to, to join in from the Katinas, and uh, let's see here. Yo, 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 there you are, man. <laughs> yeah, you never see me with my head, my head shaved, huh? Dude, looks good, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, because like my hair like grows out really fast, and bro, that's just, smooth, man. You yeah. look like a, you look like the modern day rock. Yeah, dude. So one of my buddies like was telling me like I'm like the Rock's long lost cousin. And so, oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So good to see been, Daniel. Man? Yeah. Good man. As you can tell, I'm a little uh, drenched in sweat. I'm just uh, hey <laughs> doing some yard work, man. But it's all good. Hey, hey, it's all good, man. Hey, we gotta do some. You know, we gotta do some task and uh, errands. And so, hey, that's all good though. Yeah, I'm quarantine hey, I'm life, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at least we get some time to relax and just you know, oh, yeah. talk for a little bit. Yeah, dude, Absolutely. thanks so much for accepting my invite, man. I really appreciate it. To, to, no problem, man. Thanks for yeah. having me on. Yeah, of course, man. Um, of course, a lot of a lot of a lot of people know who you guys are, uh, and, and uh, you guys travel a lot um, as brothers. You know, just ministering and leading worship everywhere. Um, the first time I actually discovered you, um, you're not going to believe this, but I was watching a Bill Gaither video. Uh, wow. I think when you were at uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes' church. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that was the first time I discovered you guys. And then and then when Greg Laurie invited you to Harvest, I was like, wait a minute. I know these guys. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, man, you're trying to give you're trying to give away our age, man. <laughs> not, not, not at all. Not at all, man. And so now you guys still, still look good because, like, you know, you guys are you know, coming in fresh. You guys look younger by the time, you know, every time you. Thank you, you know, brother. Supposedly get old. So, uh, hey, but um, just for, for those that don't know you, but they know who you guys are, but just kind of like, why don't you give a little autobiography of Jesse Katina and like how you guys uh, came to the Lord and like, um, who you know, how your family and such, and just like your, your, auto, your own autobiography. Yeah, sure. Well, man, I'm Jesse and uh, obviously yeah. part of the, the group, the Katinas, five of yeah. us brothers. Yeah. And uh, our childhood was in the islands. American Samoa. Mm -hmm. Our dad is a Pentecostal yes. preacher. And so uh, yeah. music was kind of in our blood from the beginning. Our dad was a mm -hmm. musician. And uh, when yeah. he gave his life to the Lord, shortly mm -hmm. after that, he became mm -hmm. a, uh, a licensed minister and so started mm -hmm. pastoring a church in the islands. Mm -hmm. And at the time, yeah. the five of us brothers, we were pretty young. But my dad just thought, hey, man, God yeah. gave me these, uh, these boys for a reason. Yeah. And so... I vaguely remember him getting all of all five of us brothers and yeah. trying to uh, give p keyboard lessons, piano lessons. Yeah. And uh, only one caught on to the piano vision, and that was yeah. Sam. Uh -huh. And uh, a few days after that, we were having service, and uh -huh. Sam got on the piano uh -huh. and played. I, I believe his first song was Oh, How I Love Jesus. Mm. And uh, from there, all of us brothers got on uh, drums and bass and we all started harmonizing yeah. and yeah. shortly after that we became the uh the worship band for our dad's church in, in mm -hmm. Samoa and that's mm -hmm. really where the the whole vision was birthed in the mm -hmm. island and uh mm -hmm. we began to develop this this love for music that's amazing and uh it grew into sharing our music and our passion mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. with people and uh right. You know, years after that, man, God yeah. gave us the opportunity to travel around the world and uh -huh. and to uh, share our music, man. And that's amazing. Here we are, close to forty years later, man. We're wow, we're still doing it. Thanks, forty years, you guys. Yeah, traveling together and like, yeah, pretty close, man. Pretty close. Forty years since we've been doing music, but wow. as far as the traveling, it's 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 been about thirty-five years. That's still a long time, though. <laughs> wow. Yeah, long that's time. That's amazing. Like yeah. even thirty-five, because I don't know many, you know musicians or artists that would last like i think more than five years you know like once they hit the charts and then they just like you know they disappear but you guys been you know successful i think is basically god's favor just on you guys for 
these past 30 to 40 years, which is absolutely amazing. People know who Thanks, you are. Most of all, the anointing is just really strong, which is really cool. Now, you, you, uh, you guys are five brothers. Um, who is the old, like, who's the oldest of the, yeah, yeah. them to the youngest? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell because we all yeah. look, we yeah. all look about the same. And, yeah. Uh, so Sam, Sam is the oldest. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam is the one who plays the keys. I won't yeah. give his age, but he's the oldest. <laughs> And then uh, Joe on the drums, he's yeah. next. Okay. And then uh, John and James. James is on the bass. John mm -hmm. is one of the lead singers. They're actually twins. Mm -hmm. James is older than John. And then I'm the youngest. Mm -hmm. ah. I'm about to be 46 here uh, next week sometime. And so that'll man, tell you like that, how old man. the rest of the guys are. Dude, you don't look like 46, man. What's the, what's the key, dude? What's the hey, key? love Jesus. If there's any key, <laughs> man, it's it's love there Jesus, man. Yeah, that's, a, that's cool, that's man. It. Yeah, yeah, shoot, that's awesome, man. And um, so, like, um, you, so, like, you know, you, you and your, it was John, right? That was you know, the other lead singer, right? Right, right. And basically, like, what you guys did was like what I've noticed lately. You guys been taking worship songs, and you know, we, you actually like really like arranged it in a really cool like jazzy and like but also like funky way which is like i don't know how to describe it but it looks really cool. i remember one time you did one of my favorite songs uh, from elevation echo and oh. i was just like oh dang when you guys you know after you guys did the song you guys you know took it down like oh. the bpms and then you just like jammed it around I was like almost sounds like boys to men i was like oh, oh. dang you guys thanks daniel thank you <laughs> dude that yeah but that's you know, so awesome so like you know, um, because we uh Go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's pretty you much. Yeah. yeah. You still there? Yeah. Go ahead. So pretty much because we travel uh, mm. to different churches all throughout the year. Yeah. And uh, even internationally, you know, we go to mm -hmm. New Zealand and Australia mm -hmm. and the South Pacific and the islands and mm -hmm. every now and then London and Paris. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't we can't do too many new songs that are up and right. coming in the uh, right. in the church community. But we try. Right. right. So we're we're a tad bit behind as far as current songs and, and, and it's for mm -hmm. a reason. We just want to make mm -hmm. sure that when we go to all kinds of churches, uh different denominations, that they're yeah, somewhat absolutely. familiar with the songs that we're singing. But absolutely when we do catch on to a new song that's kind of floating around in the church community, mm -hmm. you know, we try to learn it as close to the original. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to change yeah. it. People right. they work hard to write these songs. Mm -hmm. So by the time we get to them, I don't mm -hmm. think we're trying to change it on purpose. Mm -hmm. If the melody changes or the tempo changes a little bit, it's really just mm -hmm. how we feel it. But I don't think mm -hmm. we're very intentional about changing it because mm -hmm. we try to yeah. keep uh, the melodies close to how people wrote them. But obviously, mm -hmm. you know, when we kind of get into it, it just kind of morphs into some kind of Katina vibe. And uh, it ends yeah, up being yeah. different, but man, we definitely don't intend to make it different. It it just mm -hmm. flows how it flows. And that was great about music. It's just like you like, I think music is like the greatest gift God can ever give to anybody. And like what you can do with it, you know, it's like it's one thing like to have the gift of music, but able to like use it for the Lord and just like you know getting to see like what you know what kind of like abilities that you know you guys. And you know, or anybody can do. It's just absolutely, you know, incredible. And thank you. Just, just shows you how the Holy Spirit, you know, works and all that. Which thank is you, man. Amen. Great. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, like, um, you like, like I said, you travel a lot. You, um, you know, with your brothers, and uh, and then you. I want to talk about this one album that you guys did, which I think is like my one of my favorite albums. Not, not yeah. every album is cool, but like, thank you. This, this one particular one is called Nineteen. And then, which is not too long ago, yeah. um, I heard the story about it. But for those that haven't, uh, that, that don't know the story about, it, what's the vision behind the album Nineteen? Like, how'd you come up with the the, the yeah. title Nineteen? The title Nineteen. Uh, so the five of us brothers. Mm -hmm. Between the five of us, we have nineteen kids. Mm. And uh, one day we were in our office. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot that's hanging up on the walls. Mm -hmm. uh, but the one main thing that is hanging up are pictures of our 19 kids. Mm -hmm. And so this was probably, it's going on two years now, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, musically, mm -hmm. at the time, if I remember correctly, we were listening a lot to Bruno Mars' latest record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, 
Bruno Mars, man, I I feel like he could be a another Catino, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were we were inspired by yeah just his vision as far as kind of taking melodies back uh -huh. a little old school, and that's kind of the foundation, yeah, yeah. our foundation at least. And so we yeah. were listening to that record a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, we just thought, hey man, let's let's write a song. We didn't intend for it to be about our kids, right? So we started with the groove and uh, a singing melody, no words. Mm -hmm. And so where I was sitting, I was facing these pictures, or some of us brothers were facing this picture, these yeah. pictures. And we started just naturally putting lyrics to a melody, and they were kind of about kids. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of us said, man, guys, the word 19 is not in there, but we got 19 kids. Why don't we just, no matter how the song ends up, it's just yeah. titled 19. Yeah. That kind of gave us more of an inspiration to uh, mm -hmm. specifically write it about our kids. But mm -hmm. obviously, we're writing yeah. it with the intent that this is how all parents feel about their kids, man. They're a miracle. Mm -hmm. Every time we see their face, man, they just they just light our hearts up, man. That's it. That's, that, that's yeah. so amazing. That's great. Thank you, man. And when did you guys move to the States? So some, some, a lot of people don't know this about us, but our childhood was in the islands. But the, all mm -hmm. five of us brothers were actually born in California, except oh, for really? Sam. Okay. Yeah, our dad was in the uh, in the Marine in the Marine Corps, and so uh, when Sam was born, he was stationed in Camp uh, Bremerton, Washington, Washington State. Mm -hmm. And then Joe, James, John, and myself, uh, he got transferred to Camp Pendleton, uh, oh, okay. near Oceanside, and so that's where the four of us were born. So yeah, man, oh. our deep roots from San Diego. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in uh, San Diego, and that's why you guys are always at the, sometimes we're usually at the Pastor Miles' church at The Rock, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, that's so great. I think you guys did a live album there one time, right? We did, live at The Rock. Yeah, I remember. And actually, it was really cool. And uh, and sound, I wish I was there, but uh, oh. yeah, but uh, I, I, got, I got to hear it, and it was really amazing. It was really Thank cool. You. I just loved the music of it. Thank now, um, <clears throat> uh, oh, dang, I was going to, oh. I was going to, I have to make a confession. So okay. um, when you guys were at Harvest Riverside a few years ago, okay. I was doing security, I was doing security on a, for the church on Sunday night. All right. And when I was heading in, some lady stopped me. Hey, let me, me just say hi to someone me. real quick, uh, Daniel. No, uh, go ahead. Got to give it up to my brother, uh, Joshy, who's tuned in right now. It's Jeremy Pash's brother. Oh. Love you, man. Dude. So anyways, go ahead, man. Yo, Joshy, give, dude. Can you connect me with your brother, man? I would love to connect with him somehow, whether music or interview-wise. And then also here, I have um, I was talking with uh, my buddy on Wednesday, Jess, uh, Joe Davila and his wife, Meryl, a Filipino okay. uh, couple with that four kids. I think they're friends with um, – they're also from, they're originally from San Diego too, but I think Ooh. they're friends with uh, the guy that, that I think that tours with you sometimes, plays saxophone. I oh, yeah. Name. Joey Casora. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. our production yeah, that's uh, guy. Oh, okay, yeah. So. Awesome. Anyways, back to yeah. your story about Harvest, man. No. So, my, yeah, my confession. Um, so when, I, when you guys were at Harvest Riverside, um, I, I was doing security that night, and I was heading in. This lady stops me and asked me for my autograph because she thought I was one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I didn't want to ruin her joy. So, I, so I was it's, like, all good. it's all good. Man. It's all good, man. It's all good, man. Yeah. So... <laughs> Like, that's, that's awesome, I, man. I was like, okay, I'll take that as a compliment. Dude. Take so, it, man. Take it, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it was like, hey, if, if, if that's if that's the way I can be a part of a Katina, hey, why not? There you go. <laughs> hey, absolutely, man. Absolutely. We're yeah. all brothers, all family, man. Yeah, exactly, right. Now, um, I know you guys refer to all the people uh, as cousins, which is really awesome. So, like, where did that – where did that – um, where did you guys coin that from as far as, like, you know, how did you, you know, like, wanted to – you know, what made you start like wanting to call everybody cousins, not or yeah. anything like that? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty it's pretty simple, man. Most Polynesians know, man, that we're all family. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're Samoan, mm. especially living out here in the South, where the Polynesian mm -hmm. uh, community is not that big, it's growing. Right. So, uh, you know, obviously every every time we see a Samoan, which is very random, mm -hmm. or a Tongan, Fijian, it doesn't matter. You know, mm -hmm. same people group. We always mm -hmm. refer to each other. Hey, what's up, cousin? You know. Yeah. 
and uh, there's kind of a instant uh, love, instant connection there. And so when we mm -hmm. decided to uh, come up with the name for the mm -hmm. people that follow our music, we don't really yeah. we don't really refer to them as fans, right? Because we feel like we're very uh, personal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, it, it's just a lot easier to call them cousins. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, awesome. and we feel that way. Really, we do. Yeah. We feel that way. We do this one event once a year. It's a it's a cruise out of the mm -hmm. Caribbeans or, mm -hmm. or Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's several hundred people that come along. And we've mm -hmm. been doing it for uh, close to 12 years now. And uh, we just call each other cousin, man. And yeah. It's a, it's yeah. a family thing for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. You're, hey, you're a cousin, you man. You are definitely yeah. a cousin. I probably should start getting used to calling you cousin now. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I know uh, on all your years touring and traveling and ministering, um, I know there's a lot of people that would come up, you know, like, hey, great music and, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, which is really great. But is there one particular moment uh, out of all the years of ministering um, where it was like a Holy Spirit moment where like some person came up to you sharing the story, how your music you know, just your ministry has kind of like healed them from like a, as far as like, you know, or, or healed them from anything, whether it's emotional or physical or mentally. Um, is there a story that you, that, or, or, or a moment that you had throughout the years? Absolutely. There have been many of those moments, like yeah. you had just uh, mentioned, physical, emotional. Yeah. And that's a cool thing about traveling. Um, you you kind of get to circle certain place or places around the world mm -hmm. every now and then. And mm -hmm. you keep running into people that you've never met before, but they'll come yeah. up and say, man, you guys yeah. were here seven years ago yeah. and I gave my life to the Lord and mm -hmm. uh, my life has not been the same since. And you wow. guys were kind of the beginning of, of that transformation for me, obviously through the Lord, but used us as a vehicle. And uh, But wow. there is one particular thing that we've done several times. It's a mm -hmm. prison in uh, Arizona called mm -hmm. Sorora. And uh, we've mm -hmm. done ministry over there several times, and we've been given the opportunity mm -hmm. to go in different parts of the prison. Mm -hmm. One particular area is called SAG. It's mm -hmm. where these inmates, they only come out one hour a day in a confined mm -hmm. little space. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember uh, one time they allowed us to go in there, and obviously you can't have contact with the inmates, so you would have right. to talk to them in between the slits of the doors. Right. And man... Uh, and you could see the little glass window. You could see uh, yeah. their little cell in there. And yeah. one guy, he came up and you know, we're trying to communicate. He opened up his mm -hmm. little notepad that he had been writing letters and stuff. And he flipped it. And mm -hmm. he had all the lyrics to one of our songs called Thank You. Mm. And uh, he had told us yeah. that he was in there for life. Mm -hmm. But that was really the song that mm -hmm. has helped him to confirm, man, that, you know what? Though he may be confined into the cell, to the cell, he knows where he's going. He belongs wow. to Christ. And that song was very That's instrumental right. in, uh, yeah. in, in the transformation of his life. So, man, a lot of stories like that. Wow. That's amazing. Like, you know, him, him being, you know, sentenced to life in prison. But yet, you know, that shows you, you know, as long as you're breathing, it's yeah. not too late to come to Christ. And, in, in people are just saying that, like, hey, you know, I'm not worthy to come to Christ. I, I don't not good enough. Well, no one is worthy. No one is good enough, but no one's bad enough either. And that yeah. is why Christ died for all of us. And that is yes. why, which is why, you know, we have ministries like Greg and, you know, everybody just like, you know, saying, telling everybody, hey, it's not too late to come to Christ if you're breathing. And so Absolutely. that's awesome. Like how Absolutely. God would use um, um, the gift of music to evangelize to somebody and yeah but in a prison like that's mm -hmm. that, that's crazy like how did you get uh like are there some special clearances that you had to go through like to get into to minister into prison <laughs> yeah man uh again uh we, we've been doing it for a while man yeah i i can't really think of a whole lot of uh different kind of environments that we haven't been in but man prison right. they hold a special place right. in our hearts man because uh you know, sometimes those people, uh, they, they feel like they've been forgotten when that mm -hmm. is definitely not the case, man. God loves all people and uh, mm -hmm. there's hope for all, man. And so anytime yeah. that we get to go in places like uh, prisons, mm -hmm. uh, it always blesses us. Man. That's a blessing. It That's is. really a blessing. Now, yeah. um, I know all the songs that you write are great. And 
I know this would be a stupid question to ask you because it's kind of like asking like who's your favorite child but um out of all the songs that you guys have written uh, original uh which one is your favorite one to sing or which one that like you know is your favorite like to just minister to you uh man you know what it would probably have to be thank you um, thank you yeah, yeah thank you uh some people have heard the story of how that song came about uh we had just moved to nashville tennessee and it was at the height of christian music ccm music and yeah. uh, we had just moved to nashville we had just signed a record deal but mm -hmm. man we grew up in the west coast so mm -hmm. being here in nashville we kind of felt alone like man when are things going to happen for us when is right. uh, when when are our records going to ex explode you know when are we going to be recognized and, yeah you know and I, I remember getting together at the time me and john and james were living together in a one bedroom apartment and mm -hmm. sam and joe came over and we started writing this song but it kind of came out of a a session of complaining and whining and mm -hmm. you know just always wondering man when are things gonna happen mm -hmm. to us or for us mm -hmm. and quickly man we were reminded that we have a lot mm -hmm. to be grateful for man a lot of people yeah. don't even have what we have a lot of people are not in the position that we're at so we kind of mm -hmm. had to repent and mm -hmm. uh Shortly after that, we came up with the title "Thank You" and we wrote that song. That's amazing, and and man, how and how many people have been blessed with that song? You know, like just worldwide, you know. And so, I actually remember singing it too in my high school, um, with like the I was in a chamber choir, but then we also like broke off into like a we started like a little like kind of like a like a like a quartet thing, and so and then we we kind of arranged our version of "Thank You" and so. Okay. I, and so it was, I don't know if I have the video clip. I got to find it somewhere. Thanks, but, Danny. Like, hey, I got to give another shout out. Yeah. I guess this ahead. is all about Josh, uh, uh, Josh Knight, Josh Wesley. It's a, uh, <laughs> yeah. Old friend of mine from KC, man. I just want to okay. say hello. Yeah. Courtney, Jay Katina joined in. Tiva Thompson joined in. And, oh, yeah, man. Really Courtney's cool. in there. Courtney's my niece. Courtney, oh, that's your niece? She, uh, she handles all of our social media. Yes. Oh, okay. Hi, so Gordon. if we look good, it's credit to her. If we look bad, <laughs> it's not her fault, man. <laughs> Maybe I should get, like, you know, an interview with all your brothers, too, all together yeah, one, one time. Yeah, you know? one of these days we'll do it, man. One of these days, yeah. Maybe when you come to SoCal, you know, maybe we'll hit it up, you know. And yeah, we'll do something, absolutely, and if man. You're, especially if you're down the San Diego area, like, you know, at The Rock. I would love okay. to get you up there. Because cause, like, have you hit – do you know this place in there, down there called Phil's Barbecue? No, I don't. Now, are you into barbecue? Uh, you know what I am, man. I I, I probably uh, in San Diego, man. It's all about the tacos, man. <laughs> but there's this place in, in in San Diego called Phil's Barbecue. It's like okay, my my spot for ribs and all that. Wow, that's I awesome, would, man. I, yeah, so like maybe if you guys are down, like you know, we'll we'll hit it up sometime while down there. We'll do it, stuff. man. We'll do it. Yeah, and so when, when everything's back to normal, and okay. um, yeah, hey, let's play a little game. Uh, let's let's do it, man. Play. Yeah, play a little uh, Would You Rather. Uh, see what you guys um, – uh, are you a Nike person or an Adidas person? Are you serious, man? Are you really asking me that question, man? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. 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 It's okay. swoosh world all day, Wait, man. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, I'll just join you right there. <laughs> so, Daniel, I'm not sure if uh, – uh, I don't know how long we've been doing it. Every place we sing at, us brothers wear the same shoes, and uh, they always got the swoosh. Ah, <laughs> I noticed that you always wear the same type of kicks every time. You know, like yeah. every time you go, like it's, even though it's different kicks, you guys just all wear the same kicks. So, yeah, that's 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 incredible. So I love, <laughs> I like that. That's really cool. Um, let's see. Um, are you? Is there a BJ's or Cheesecake Factory in Nashville? There's cheesecake, yeah. Is there a BJ's there or no? BJ's, BJ's. I don't believe so, but I do believe I've believe eaten that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, cause like I want to ask you if you, which one would you rather take? So. Hey, whatever's cheaper, I'll go there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you had in and out? Have you had in and out? Oh, absolutely, man. Animal style, yeah. extra crispy, man. <laughs> What's compar What's comparable to In-N-Out in Nashville? 
Uh, and then I, I believe it'd probably be Sonic. Uh, we got Sonic really? Burger. Yeah, we have. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously we got the main ones: uh, Jack in the Box, Burger King. Uh, yeah. McDonald's, but yeah, Sonic would probably oh, be it. If In and Out oh, really? ever got here, Sonic's man. In and Out would wipe all these places. Oh, bro, we got Chick Fil A. Oh yeah, that's true, Chick Fil A. So, have you had the chicken sandwich at uh, at uh, Popeyes? Dude, my brothers have, but I haven't because the nearest You're one is about uh, thirty minutes from here. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So, wow, I gotta get there. That, that's it. That's, yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. Do you follow sports? Die hard, man. I'm a sports fanatic. W which team are you? Which what's your what are your teams in bas like in every, on every sport that you can think of? Basketball, man. It's all about the Los Angeles Lakers, man. Yeah, you're you're yeah. you're a lot, you're a Laker town, huh? Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's Lakers, <laughs> and then uh, my brother's uh, Sam on the keys. He loves the Raiders, the Twins, and Joe. They're die hard Steelers. And I've been a Los Angeles Rams fan my whole life. You're a Rams fan your whole life. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're yeah, just, man. Okay. Wow. Um, do you follow baseball too? We don't follow baseball a whole lot, but uh, when it gets to the World Series, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll check it out. Just because of the uh, uh, okay. Just because of the emblem, man. I like the uh, the LA Dodgers. Oh, okay. Because like I've I've asked a couple of guys that are Dodger fans, and they're both pastors. Because wow. I just wanted to see how upset they were because of the 2017 World Series. Because you cheer about that? I when did, man. I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> when the Houston Astros cheated, and so I was actually because I'm a, I'm an Angels fan. Okay. And the home opener this year was supposed to be against the Houston Astros, but because oh. of COVID, they had. Gotcha. And, and I really wanted to go, gotcha. but because of the whole COVID thing, they had to. <laughs> Josh yeah. said, "Beat LA, beat LA." <laughs> oh yeah, man, John. That guy's a hater, man. That guy's a Warriors <laughs> fan. He's a uh, San Francisco. He's a Golden State fan. Oh yeah, man. Oh, hey, Arlene. Josh, I need to talk to you, man. I gotta pray for you too, man. It's like yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, speaking of Lakers, a little serious question: Where were you? Where were you exactly? And how did you hear uh, when you heard that Kobe uh, passed away? Dude, that was a tough, tough day. Yeah. For my family, mm -hmm. all five of us are Laker fans, yeah. and obviously, uh, all of our sons mm -hmm. have been adopted Laker fans as well. And uh, my son is 15; he's been mm -hmm. a Kobe uh, follower all of his life ever since he uh, found out about basketball. We were actually mm -hmm. in Orange Beach, Alabama, and uh, we had mm -hmm. just done led worship for two services at a French church. Mm -hmm. Ate mm -hmm. lunch, yeah. got in the van, and grabbed my mm -hmm. phone, and someone had texted me that Kobe had passed away. And I just kind of mentioned it to the rest of the guys, and they're like, no, nah, that can't be true. And yeah. I didn't think it was true until I got back to the hotel, and, mm -hmm. man, that was, a, that was a tough week. It was tough. It was yeah. tough, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I didn't want to believe it first because, like, you know, a lot, a lot of people would say things just to get attention, but, right. you know, this one – but this thing, I was like, I couldn't believe it. But um, back to, on the flip side, um, without any bias, um, who would you who would you say would have had the chance before COVID season hit would take all would take the championship, the NBA title? Man, hopefully I'm not biased, but I really thought my Lakers had a had a chance. And if the sin, uh, if the season continues on, uh, mm -hmm. man, I, I think they still do have a good chance. Uh, I didn't. I didn't like LeBron before he got to LA, but man, I, I become mm -hmm. a fan. He, he seems like a yeah. pretty cool family dude and great leader, yeah. man. And he's got a great basketball spirit, man. When LeBron leaves in a couple of years or so, who do you think Lakers are going to pick up? I don't know, man. You know the whole thing about being in the, the big market. It doesn't mean the same like it used to, fifteen, mm -hmm. twenty years ago, but. Uh, Hopefully we'll get somebody. Hopefully AD will decide to play the rest of his career there, man. Mm -hmm. Do you think Giannis would come to LA? Maybe, man. Maybe, man. Yeah. I mean that that would be the. You know why? The, you know why I think that he might come to LA? Because why is that? The Lakers have his younger brother. Right. The Lakers have his younger brother. Yeah, team. yeah, yeah. And that'll probably be like a bait to get. Oh, your brother <laughs> John just joined in. <laughs> oh yeah, What's up, man. man. What's up, John? We're just we're just talking about you, man. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, and uh, no, that's cool, man. That's very cool. Hey, um, let's see here. Um, between um, Allen Iverson and Steph Curry, who would you take as your point guard for fantasy? Man, I, I think I uh, – is Joshy still on here? Oh, he's still on here, man. Yeah. So I guess I he's won't answer there. it. No, no, no. I think I'd take <laughs> Steph Curry, man. <laughs> yeah. I did, hey, Josh. Uh, um, uh, Iverson is my generation, but I, I think I'd take Steph yeah. Curry, man. <laughs> jo hey, jo Josh thinks Giannis is coming to, to, to the Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Because they lost KD. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you might. I think. I think Zion Williamson might go to to Golden State in the future. That's my thing. That's my theory. You know. Hey, you know what, Daniel? They can have him, man. They can have him, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. AI had better shoes. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so. <laughs> hey, Howard just joined uh, from the Rock. Hey, Diego. Howard. What's up, dude? God bless you, yeah. Kev. It's great to see you guys. Yeah. So, um, hey, Howard, if you're just joining in, you missed a, ba a great basketball talk. Um, We're talking about ministry and basketball, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I want Michael Jordan. Of course, anybody wants Michael Jordan. <laughs> hey, I have Michael Jordan right here. There you go, man. <laughs> He's right here, dude. So, uh, hey, um, what has been your favorite wor uh, worship song, uh, either all time or as of late? Yeah, my favorite worship song uh, – I think my favorite worship song has a lot to do with traveling around and being in different uh, countries. But every time we sing this song, it just, it's the same spirit, uh, same uh, energy of people participating. Uh, mm -hmm. I think some of it is just because it's so singable. It would have to be Chris Tomlin's uh, How Great Is Our God. Oh, that's a, that's, that's a great, that's a great go-to right there. Yeah. <laughs> Howard, Howard's like Zion ain't going nowhere. Uh, you never know, man. And Golden yeah. State has the money. I think they're just saving up, you know, so they can get Zion, or maybe they can get, uh, uh, I don't know who, who else. Yeah. But uh, hey, Daniel, yeah, but, I just uh, got a uh, shout out to uh, my sister in law, Kathy Katina's on here as well. Oh, hey, what's up, sister? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or cut or cousin now? And cousin, so, man, cousins. Yeah. So yeah, but how great would be that song for me? Hey, Josh. Um. Comment below, how is the arena compared, uh, the new arena in San Francisco compared to the one, the Oracle Arena in Oakland? You comment below. And then also, do you believe that the Oakland A's should move to San Jose? Comment below, Josh. So, All right, Daniel. That's while I, while uh, Josh comments below, mm -hmm. I'll just tell you right now, that new arena, the spirit in there right now is a losing one so far. <laughs> But hey, hey, we're <laughs> believing for uh, better seasons ahead, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is true. Um, but um, let's see here. Um, what has been your lifelong verse, your favorite verse? Um, or, pa or passage of scripture? Yeah, it, it changes from time to time. Um, but yeah. man, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Mm. The Lord declares the plans that he has for all of us, plans of hope and a great future, plans of prosperity, the plans not mm -hmm. to harm us. And, uh, mm -hmm. man, that, that, that's a verse uh, for everyone, you know, especially mm -hmm. in this season mm -hmm. where there's a Josh, lot of fear, worry, doubt, question. God's got a great plan for all of us, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Josh, hasn't been been, Josh hasn't been in the new arena yet. That's, so that's funny. Um so you've been a – oh, going back to sports, you're an L.A. Rams fan, even though they're – how long have you been in Nashville for? You've been in Nashville for 26 years, right around 26 there. 26 years. So there's no way you're going to be a Titans fan at all. Actually, you know, five of us brothers, those are our uh, main teams that we root for, the Raiders, the Steelers, and the Rams. Mm -hmm. But, man, we love, we love the Titans. We, we root for them. Uh, we get to do chapel for them at least once a year, once a mm -hmm. season. And uh, we mm -hmm. finally did the national anthem last year. And, oh, that's yeah, cool. we love those guys, man. We got oh, a great, great, great city. They support yeah. their Titans, man. That's, a, that's very awesome. How far are you guys from uh, Atlanta? Atlanta, we're about four hours away. Oh, four hours away. Okay, so it's like from SoCal to Vegas. So it's not like a not bad yeah. drive. It's okay, not that's, that's cool, man. Um, 
let's see here. Um, if if there were going to be, uh, let's see here. Between, have you had Del Taco? Is there a Del Taco there or in in Nashville or Taco Bell? No, we got this that, that amazing place, Taco Bell. That's, Taco that's Bell. what we got, man. Taco you know, Bell there's Rains. No, there's no Del Taco there, huh? There might be, but I, I wouldn't know where one is. Mm -hmm. Taco Bell's how, cute here. On a scale of 1 to 10, how desperate are you to have, wanting it in and out in Nashville? Man, it's pretty high up there. I would have to say it's about a 9. About a 9? About a 9, nine man. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, that's – yeah, because, like, I think anywhere in and out starts, you know, like in a new state, it's just like – a very, you know, it's like a yeah. Black Friday line or, yeah. you know, it's like, no, that's cool, man. Hey, um, before we go, uh, you know, we're in the midst of COVID season. We're all quarantined. Yeah. Uh, Jackson Becca says, Del Taco's better than Taco Bell. <laughs> it could be, you know. <laughs> yeah. Josh says, as a straight up San Francisco native, I hate on Oakland teams, but I would want them to stay in Oakland. But Oakland City are here messing around. <laughs> yeah. They should, because, you know, of all, people, of all places, why would you want to go to Oakland, California? <laughs> you know, I think San Jose is like a, Josh, is like a better market, in my opinion. <laughs> you have the sharks, you have, yeah. you know, the earthquakes, and so, and. Uh, there goes your next guest right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kev, Kev just asked, when will you and your brother start touring again? Is there a time frame? <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks, Kev. Um, as of right now, uh, we're just taking it month by month uh, we do have some dates on the calendar for uh for june mm -hmm. but again it all it all depends on you know what the situation is with mm -hmm. flying and mm -hmm. churches opening back up mm -hmm. uh, but at the at the moment you know we're just recording a lot of uh worship mm -hmm. sets for different churches around the country and uh god has been good no that's that's great man yeah i wish i wish everything's back to normal again just drop my phone. <laughs> uh, I hope everything's back to normal so that you guys can tour, and plus we can all go back to church and just work. Yeah. And just, yeah. Because I don't know if you heard here in California, especially in Orange County, like Governor Newsom just uh, uh, shut down all the beaches. And I heard. I heard about that. And and uh, I was planning to go this weekend, but oh, there's man. yeah, there were protests going on, you know, like in Huntington, yeah. because you know everybody wants to. You know, go. You know, you know, express their freedom and all that, sure. and all that. And so, I was going to go, but I was just like, yeah, I got better things to do. Plus, I interview you too. So, yeah. Um, but uh, remember, nineteen ninety Samoa Cookhouse in Eureka, Mister Izzy seven eight seven eight asked. Uh, I do remember. <laughs> I do remember. I'd much rather <laughs> them not put the date, but yes, I remember nineteen ninety, <laughs> man. Wait, what's Samoa Cookhouse? Uh, there's a little uh, in Eureka, California, I believe. I don't know if it's a street or if it's a little, uh, I don't know what you would call it. Uh -huh. Yeah, they got this place that says, Welcome to, Sa to Samoa in Eureka. So, yeah, oh, I remember okay. that. Oh, okay. I've never been to Eureka, so, because it's like nine hours from here. So, <laughs> but, it's all uh, good. It's all yeah. good, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, but uh, Jackson says Santa Cruz have been a nice to go, but shut down. Yep, shut down. Everywhere too, especially Orange County. Yeah, all the beaches. But um, I was gonna. Yeah, but while I was, oh, yo, we gotta reschedule you at the Rock. Yes, Dude. we would love to come back. We would love yeah. to come back, and uh, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Uh, hey, Howard, when they're place. when they're back, we'll all get we'll all get some Phil's barbecue too. So uh, so so get your stomachs hungry for that. You know, Sounds when, good, when man. Back to so um, hey, um, before we go, I was like like I said earlier, we're in COVID season. We're uh, a lot of people are furloughed, lost their jobs, or people are fearing about the health. Um, uh, I sense the Lord put a word in your heart to share a word of encouragement to everybody that might be fearing about the virus. Um, what is there something that you like to tell everybody that might be fearing yeah. about this virus? Totally. You know, several mm -hmm. uh, passages come to mind, verses, you know, be still and know that that I am God. Mm -hmm. His ways are far above ours. You know, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's a challenge, but man, if we can mm -hmm. hold on to that truth, that God knows mm -hmm. all things, 
uh, he's mm-hmm. omnipresent. Mm-hmm. He's everywhere all at the same time. Mm-hmm. And he gets into everyone's situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was the day before yesterday, my family's mm-hmm. devotion, it was, it was titled, Wait. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been told on many different occasions that waiting on the Lord doesn't mean to be still and not do mm-hmm. anything. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of relatable to when you walk into a, a restaurant, mm-hmm. people who serve you, they're called waiters and waitresses. Mm-hmm. And while they wait on you, they're serving you. Mm-hmm. And so in any area of your life, uh, you got to find those moments mm-hmm. of serving your, your family, serving each other, serving mm-hmm. your neighbors, serving your friends, mm-hmm. however mm-hmm. that's possible. If that's through a phone call, through uh, email or a text, man, mm-hmm. God can do some amazing things. Mm-hmm. Not just who you do it to, but yeah. in, your life, in your life in particular. Mm-hmm. And so now is not the time to shrink back, but to push forward in mm-hmm. really uh, being a blessing to others. And, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, I'm, I, I've been reminded a lot recently to man to forget about what's going on in my life and to think mm-hmm. and pray for others. I know it's a hard mm-hmm. time because of what yeah. we're dealing with. But, man, mm-hmm. we serve a great big God. Put our trust in him. Amen. Great word, man. Great word, man. Bro, thank you so much for just joining me, man, and uh, just uh, talking with me and, like, you know, ministry and, and sports and Lakers basketball. Hey, and, thanks, uh, Daniel. And we'll definitely talk more Lakers basketball when, you know, everything's back to normal, you know, when you travel again. And so, yeah. oh, Haley, Haley Katina just joined in just now Haley, at our man, end of our conversation. beautiful niece, man. <laughs> Haley is a talented, yeah. uh, talented girl, so smart. Love you, Haley. But, hey, Daniel, before I go, I just want to say thank you, man. Thanks for this invitation. I don't do yeah, this. Yeah, of course. Me, but I've enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, no, thank I, you. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a huge honor, man. And so, thank you. hey, and, and guys, uh, give him a follow at Jesse Katina on Instagram and all the social media places. And also, they're uh, the brothers, the whole Katina brothers at the Katinas. Um, just keep. Uh, uh, all the tour dates and like you know um will be there as well you know when everything's back to normal if you guys want to uh, book them up um you know you can always contact them i think on their website there's yes. a way to do that so um if these are these guys are great to have at your church or event um Thank so you. yeah so so don't um so um so so please uh, uh invite them to your church or event <laughs> whatever it is and um dude I'll, when when I come to Nashville, I'll hit you up. I would love to do a like a YouTube cover or some sort, you know. With Absolutely, you guys. man. So, or, hey, or we'll do, do some, some music. Some... We'll do some music and we'll jump some cars together, man. Absolutely, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> jump some cars, dude. Some people thought that was real. Some people <laughs> thought like, dude. Some the older folks have, on my Facebook uh, profile like messaged me. They're like, "Are you okay? <laughs> like, they, like, did you go to the hospital? Check your knees out." <laughs> I was laughing i was just like take i want to be hilarious the, i want to be the third one to do it you kobe and me man <laughs> uh yeah no, no we'll seriously like we'll figure it out you know if you want to do something like that we'll make it happen dude okay brother thanks dude, a lot love man. your cousin man you you you, you take care say hi to the, the family for me and uh do a hope we'll hit you we'll up sometime thanks a lot daniel <laughs> yeah i love you man you take love care you too, brother. talk to you later all right Bye. you see you man all right, take care. And, uh, and uh, hope you guys are doing well. I hope uh, you guys are keep being safe uh, throughout this uh, COVID season. Uh, Sunday, I have um, Arasis Deline from Free Chapel. And then I also have another guy from Free Chapel as well, uh, Dylan Coke on Monday. Wednesday, I have Adam Crab from the Crab Family, Gates of Vocal Band. So uh, if you guys don't want to miss that. Uh, but take care, guys. Be safe. Have a great weekend.